Hello, 8th grade ELA student. I am Ms. Tolman. I am assisting Ms. Joseph in her TKO online support. Uh, this week, this video, we are going through Unit 4, Understanding Literary Texts. We are in Lesson 2 of our Unit 4, which is Themes in Literary Works. We do have some vocabulary. We have one vocabulary word, which is theme. The central message or insight revealed in a work of literature. So what? So what is an excellent question to ask when you're thinking about the purpose of a literary work. The theme of a piece of literature, poem, movie, or even video clip on YouTube is the message that the author wants the audience to understand. When deciding on the theme, authors determine what insight or idea they want their audience to remember from reading a work. Theme is a very important element if you are reading or writing. After all, sending or receiving the message is the main reason most people read, write, speak, draw, create a film, or engage in any other activity that has to do with communication. Learning to find the theme of a literary work aids your comprehension and retention. Another important part of being an active reader is looking for the central message of the story. However, if the theme of a work is sometimes difficult to find because it is rarely stated directly. When looking for a theme in a literary work, ask yourself, what does the author of this work want me to understand about people or life? The theme is often revealed through the character's actions in the story. The consequences to their actions, the plot, the conflict, the resolution to the conflict, and the tone of the story. The theme is not a summary of the story nor is it expressed as a single word. Instead, we express them as a statement of a universal truth about people or life. So we have our fancy little chart here, which is a theme is and a theme is not. So a theme is the central message or insight revealed in a literary work, the general statement about the people or life, often expressed indirectly and revealed through the characters, actions, and their consequences, Plot, conflict, conflict, conflict resolution, and tone. A theme is not a topic of the work. It's not a summary of the plot. It's not the conflict. It's not the purpose of the work. And it's not stated as a single word. Here is a nice little video that helps explain theme. You just hit play and go ahead and watch it. So let's practice understanding theme as it relates to poetry. Sometimes it's easier to find the theme in a poem because poems often state observations about people or life. Also, poems use for fewer words than stories, thus the reader is able to focus on the message presented. Often poems present the theme through images or word pictures. Each of the three poems you will read has a different image used to represent the theme of the poem. So our first one is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler. Long I stood, and I looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent down in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by. And, what, and that has made all the difference. So here's two roads. It kind of goes through and explains some of the imagery in it. You can go ahead and play that one. Our number two is poem 352 from Men Yoshu. Living in this world, to what shall I compare it? It's like a boat, rowing out at the break of day, leaving no trace behind. And number three, from the Rubiat. The caravan of life shall always pass. Beware that it is fresh as sweet young grass. Let, let's not worry about what tomorrow will amass. Fill my cup again. This night will pass, alas. 
Now let's look at each poem more closely to try and determine the theme. Our poem number one, The Road Not Taken. Three poems come from very three, three very different cultures. The first one was written by Robert Frost, a man often referred to as America's poet. The Road Not Taken is one of his most famous works. The next poem is from the Japanese culture. It's from a book called Manyoshu, meaning the collection of 10,000 leaves, the oldest collection of Japanese poetry. The last poem is written by a man from the Middle East, Omar Kayyam. The poem is from a book called The Rubiat. Omar Kayyam lived in Persia, which is now Iran, from around the year 1100 AD. These, read these poems again, this time looking for the theme or message of each poem and the image that's used to represent that theme. As you read, try to decide for yourself the message the author wants you to understand. With poetry, there's not usually one right way to understand it. As long as you support your analysis with evidence from the text, you can determine the message yourself. If we take the words of the poem literally without looking at any underlying meaning, it seems to be about the poet walking on a dirt road in the woods. He comes to a place where the road splits in two and he goes in different directions. The roads have not been walked on this morning. They're all about the same, but one is a little bit more used than the other is a little less used. The poet wants to go on both ways, but he understands that he cannot. He must choose the direction to take, so he decides to take the one that wanted where, the one that was less traveled by. The poet admits that he probably will not return to the road not taken. The speaker says in the last line, and that has made all the difference. Without the figurative or underlying meaning of the poem, the last line is somewhat confusing. Now to understand the figurative meaning of the message of the poem. Think about the images the poet uses. In this poem, the main image is the path in the woods that comes to a fork. The speaker must decide which way to go, and he knows he cannot travel down both roads. Ask yourself, what could the author be trying to communicate through the image of the fork in the road? Most people understand this poem to be about choices in life. Read the poem again with this in mind. The speaker says that he has two choices. They are not equal, not one right and one wrong, but that one is more popular than the other. The speaker chooses the less popular option and remarks that the decision he has made has made all the difference. Remember to find the theme. Ask yourself, what does the author want me to understand about life? If the topic of the poem is decisions, then the theme could be expressed this way. The decisions we make have an impact on our lives and often determine the direction and course of our lives. When you choose one path in life, you can't choose the other at the same time. And life rarely allows us to go back and remake our choices. Remember, a theme can be expressed in many different ways, depending on the re reader's interpretation of the poem. Poem number two. Poem 352 from Menyoshu. In this poem, the speaker compares the life to a rowboat. A rowboat that rows out in the morning and leaves no mark once the wave has closed behind it. Now look for the deeper meaning behind the image of the rowboat. How is life sim similar to a rowboat setting sail? As you think about the image, what ideas occur to you? A rowboat is a small boat powered by the person rowing it. The boat moves as quickly as sl or as slowly as the person rowing, and it moves in the direction that the rower steers it. The boat, the rowboat sails, leaving no trace behind. No way to return the exact way it came. The speaker of the poem tells us the boat represents human life. After considering the meaning behind the images of the poem, state the theme of the poem in your own words. One example of a statement of theme from this poem is as follows. A person controls the direction his or her life takes. And once he or she chooses a certain way, he or she cannot go back exactly the way they came and choose a different direction. Poem number three from the Rubiat. This, this poem speaks of a passing caravan. Caravan is a group traveling together, traditionally on camels and other pack animals, along the trade routes carrying goods. He gives the warning, beware of fresh grass, and says not to worry about tomorrow because night is passing. Look at the poem on a deeper level. You can see the journey of the caravan represents life. Remembering that the poet lived in the Middle East will help you remember 
will help you better understand the poem. Why do you think the speaker of the poem says to beware of the sweet young grass? Perhaps he's telling the reader to beware of being drawn away from the path by something that seems appealing. The speaker also tells the reader not to worry about tomorrow, but to enjoy himself because the night will soon pass. This advice applies to life as well. Putting all these ideas together, we can state the theme of the poem as follows. The journey of life is short, so don't allow anything to distract you from your purpose. Live your life to the fullest each day because you only have one life to live, and soon it will be over. Even though these poems come from three very different cultures and time periods, the ideas presented in the poems are similar. Let's look at some of the unifying elements. One, they use images of, this, of some kind of a journey to represent life. In The Road Not Taken, the journey was a hike through the woods. In poem 352, the journey is a rowboat setting sail. In the poem from the Rubiat, the journey is the path the caravan follows. Number two, the message of each poem relates to the temporary nature of life. Number three, each poem indicates that we must make choices to determine the course of our lives. In making these choices, we often have to give up on something to get something else. After carefully examining these three poems, you can see that they present similar themes. Each poem just uses a different image to convey the message to the reader. As you read a literary work, try to look for the message the author wants you to understand. Now, here's our little green box. Take a hint, examine, recall, and apply. When you're answering multiple choice questions, take, take three steps to help boost your success. Step one is to examine. In this step, you read the question and possible answers. Really pay attention to, the, to what the information is being asked for. Look for any information that is given for you to use. Step two is recall. Take a moment to think about the topic of the question. Think about what you already know about this topic. How does, it, how does the information fit in with what you already know? Step three is to apply. Read all the possible answers and eliminate any answers that you do not apply to the question. Consider the information being asked for and the possible answers you have left. Apply what you know to select the best answer, the best possible answer to the question being asked. The other thing we can do is we do have the resources right above. So you can scroll back up, you can watch this video again, or you can refer to your notes to get the answers to these. So we're going to answer the following question. So you're going to read the following poem and answer the question that follows. The Men That Don't Fit In by Robert William Service. There's a race of men that don't fit in, a race that can't stay still. So they break hearts of kilt and kin and roam the world at will. They range the field and rove the flood and climb the mountain's crest. Theirs is the curse of gypsy blood, and they don't know how to rest. If they just went straight, they might go far, but they are strong and brave and true. But they're always tired of the things that are, and they want the strange and new. They say, could I find my proper groove? What a deep mark I would make. So they chop and change, and each fresh move is only a fresh mistake. And each forgets as he strips and runs with a brilliant, pitiful, fitful pace. It's the steady, quiet, plodding ones who win the lifelong race. And each forgets that his youth has fled, forgets that his prime is past, till he stands one day with a hope that's dead in the glare of truth at last. He has failed. He has failed. He has missed his chance. He has just done things by half. Life's been jolly. Good joke on him. And now is the time to laugh. Ha ha. He is the legion lost. He was never meant to win. He's a rolling stone, and it's bred in the bone. He's a man who won't fit in. Now, which word best describes the theme, or best defines theme? Number two, what is the curse of all men who don't fit in? Number three, what is the theme of this poem? Number four, how does the speaker of the poem feel about men who don't fit in? Number five, what is the meaning of the phrase in the next to last line? 
he's a rolling stone. And number six, what term describes the central message or insight revealed in a work of literature? This is a text. You just type the answer in there. Know that you are doing a fantastic job. Keep moving forward. Keep pushing. You've got this. Let us know if you have any questions. I will see you in the next video.